Okay, so you're trying to get in shape for a beach holiday or vacation. Maybe you've got a microphone on your head. But you're trying to get in shape for an event that's maybe not sporting. It's just to stay in shape in order for you to look good, in order for you to feel good. Completely understand that. Maybe not so long ago, I would have felt that that was vanity and insecurity. And when I was growing up, for sure, I was a product of my environment. And that environment meant that you had a perspective of what success looked like. So successful people lived in nice houses or apartments. They drove nice cars. They had nice watch. They had nice clothes. They went to good places like to eat and drink. That was my perception of success. And so that's what I, in, that was my inspiration. That's why, I, okay, how do I get there? How do I become what I can see in my environment to be successful? Exactly the same with fitness. You learn, I learned later with that, that actually success isn't about the material things. It's not what you show. And if you need to show, it's, if you need to show those things, it's probably you're compensating for something. With, with, with fitness, definitely it's the vanity and insecurity that might fuel some people's uh, attempt to get fit. But the fact that people are getting fit in the first place is a massive tick in the box. It's a massive win for those people. And when I was growing up, my, product, my environment was guys tried to look, and this is growing up in Manchester, it's raining, it's cold. People were trying to look good, go to the gym and look good, look big in a t-shirt, look big in a shirt. So that it wasn't a case of looking good on the beach. Like when I moved to Spain, everybody would want to look good so they could look good on the beach when they just have trunks on or they have a bikini on or whatever. People wanted to look good to impress other girls. I get that. But then what you get in gym culture is you get this culture where you've gone past trying to get yourself in shape to look good for girls. You've gone past trying to get yourself in shape to look good for guys. Like girls and guys, they want a certain, they want an athletic physique, they want a, maybe a muscular physique, maybe a more leaner physique. Everyone has their preference. But when you go over the top, and I definitely did go over the top, when you go over the top, you've gone past trying to look good for girls or guys, trying to feel good about yourself. What you then go into, and I got into this, I started to get in shape for my rugby. I, needed to, I felt I needed to be bigger. I was playing on the wing. I felt I needed to, needed to be stronger and faster. And so I got stronger and, and fitter. But then I came, became obsessed with, okay, now I'm going twice a day to the gym instead of just once. And all of a sudden, I'm, looking, I'm constantly looking in the mirror. I'm constantly seeing those marginal gains, those little tiny gains. But I'm not, I'm not noticing them because I'm just seeing myself every day in the mirror. So you become, you become the person you are in the mirror, but then all of a sudden, back then you would take a photo on a holiday and somebody would just send you the photo and then you'd be like, wow, I didn't realize I was that big. To the point where you can see some people, their head looks small, yeah? For me, being in shape is looking in proportion. You know, your head, your kind of physique, and you know, you could tell, if, we, if you think about the ideal physique for a man, there's a massive debate on whether it's Brad Pitt in Troy or whether it's Brad Pitt in Fight Club, yeah? And Brad Pitt in Fight Club, it's probably to do with the attitude in terms of like the smoking, the don't, you know, the, the, anti, um, the anti-establishment kind of attitude, that kind of, that's very, very sexy for people to see. So I kind of get that, but that physique is actually not that difficult to achieve. So why am I talking about this? It's like, if your goal is to get in shape for a holiday, or it's to get in shape for one certain event, great, no worries, you've got a goal. You've got a short, medium term goal, and that's in the diary, that's gonna happen, and you're gonna work towards that. That's gonna help get you out of bed in the morning, it's gonna help get you to the gym, it's gonna help get you to the track or onto the road to run, whatever it is you're aiming for, you're more motivated because you've got something in the diary, that's great. How about this? That, first of all, that's in extrinsic motivation because you're trying to get better for a beach holiday and you'll receive the rewards from maybe people who say, oh, you look in great shape. Or you look in the mirror and you feel in great shape. You see that reflection, you feel in great shape. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with being in shape, feeling great about yourself. And therefore you have this confidence, which to the opposite sex and to other people around you, that confidence is very sexy. But how about you flip it? And how, you, how about you make it, instead of like re training immensely for a three-month period or six-month period 
before a holiday, everything goes out of the window on a holiday, and then you try to get back on the horse afterwards, but the motivation is not there because you don't have anything to look forward to. You've not got another holiday booked, or you've not got another event booked. How about you flip it and you make smaller deposits every single day? So you come to the gym and you do 20 minutes intense work. You come to the gym and you, and you know what you're going to do. You walk in the gym, okay, today is chest, right? Okay, bench press, I'm going to do the, I'm going to do whatever, and then I'm going to do some push ups, whatever it takes, yeah? And then it's 20 minutes, and it's literally like three, four exercises concentrated for about four minutes each and there's really short space in between and you're going to see massive benefit. but it's those regular contributions of 20 minutes per day and it literally 20 minutes is all it takes if you work one body part if you're just trying to get in physical shape to look good and feel good about yourself 20 minutes a day is all it takes in the gym and, and maybe you only need to do 20 times a day four or five times a week. I would do a little bit more if I could only do four times a week, but if you're doing six or seven times a week, and I'd give your body at least one day a week rest, I would do just 20 minutes a day and just concentrate on one body part. So that's chest and triceps, legs and shoulders, back and biceps, that simple, yeah? And then for a runner, what does that look like? Now, most of the time, you only need to go out there and do an easy run for 30 minutes. For 40 minutes that's that's it so you've got your kit on you go out there for 30 minutes 40 minutes those are your easy runs those are your recovery runs twice a week you need to go hard but it's those regular consistent okay three four times a week that you're doing the easy runs and recovery runs that make you an overall better athlete better rounded athlete so that you can then go hard on that interval interval session you you're able to run and build that speed and then for the long run you're building endurance and, and, uh, and stamina, and, and there, therefore you're able to go longer, you're building your ability to go longer, and you're building your ability to go faster. So when it comes to your race, whether it's 5K, 10K, marathon, ultramarathon, it doesn't matter, you're gonna be well prepared, you're gonna be well rounded. All aspects of your game are feeding into other. So there are easy and recovery runs are able to get you in shape to recover fat, fuller and faster to get ready to run fast on that midweek interval session. That midweek interval session speed that you're building is gonna thread over into the long run so that for the same effort level, for the same heart rate, you're able to run faster. And so when that translates into your half marathon or your marathon, whatever you're training for, that's gonna translate into the, e the first half is gonna feel pretty easy. The next quarter is gonna feel like, okay, now we're focused. Ne and, and the final quarter is gonna feel like, okay, we're in it. And this is when we really need to work for the result that we've been aiming for. But it's the consistency. Whether you're working out in the gym to try and get fitter, or whether you're doing running, or whether you're practicing tennis, or whatever it is, if it's skill or it's endurance, it's the regular deposits. And they don't have to be long, 20, 30, 40 minutes, a day, if you're in, like I said, if you're in the gym and you, your, your, your goal is just to lose weight, have a smaller body, a, sh a smaller body fat percentage, and, and look lean, look in shape, 20 minutes a day, but consistent over the year. There's no gaps, there's no kind of, I've been on holiday, or it's Christmas now, so I'm drinking myself, uh, my drink, drinking my own weight in body, in uh, alcohol, it's none of that. It's kind of like, I, and that dictates the rest of your life. Because you've got that target in place, and because you're that disciplined, consistent person, all of a sudden you don't want to go out for a drink too much. You don't want to get absolutely hammered because you know that's going to take it off the next day. That creates a great flywheel and that creates a great, great habit, which whatever part of your life you're in, whatever age you are, super important. If you've got any, any use, benefit out of this video, please like and subscribe and drop a comment and let me know what you're training for at the moment and what is your, what is the thing that you're trying to get over in order to get this in your life to build a better physique or, or a better endurance body.